when you create an advanced report in Excel, you might have different options or combination of tools. I am Nabil Murad. In this tutorial, I create an advanced report using pivot tables along with some dynamic array functions. Then I create the same report using a little trick in Power Query. Let me know in a comment which method you prefer. Now, let's have a look. In this worksheet, I have a table which shows a region, a manager, a customer, and sales. I would like to summarize my data and create a report that shows the total sales for each manager in each region. And at the same time, I want in one single cell the names of customers who placed these orders. I start by creating a pivot table. I select any single cell. I go to the Insert tab of the ribbon. I click on Pivot Table. I want to create my pivot table in the existing worksheet. I select Existing, and I'll be selecting F1 as a destination. I hit OK. And then from the pivot table field list, I drag the region to the rows. And then I drag the manager below the region in the rows drop area. And then I drag the sales to the values area. I'll be making some improvements to my pivot table. So I want to turn off the pivot table field list. I also don't want the collapse and expand buttons. I want to format the sales. Then I select any single number, right click, select number format. And I want to format it as currency. I hit OK. I also need to bring the headers here at the top. I don't want a subtotal. I don't want a grand total. I go to the design tab. And to the very left of the design tab, I turned off the subtotals. I turned off the grand totals. And I changed the report layout to a tabular form. I want to repeat the region. Then I click on report layout one more time and select repeat all item labels. And that's wonderful. Now I created my pivot table, which is the sum of sales for each manager in each region. I want to extract in one single cell the names of customers who returned this sum of sales. And to do that, I'll be adding an extra column and use a combination of dynamic array functions. I type clients. I can copy the formatting. And then I start creating my function, which is a filter function that will return the names of customers based upon two conditions. I type equal filter, and then I hit tab. What do you want to filter? I want to filter the customer column. I select the entire column. I type a comma. Based upon two conditions, I include the conditions in brackets. I type an opening bracket. And then my first condition is in the region. I select the region column and ask, is it equal to the region in F2? I close the bracket. I multiply by the second condition. I open bracket. And my second condition is in the manager. I select the manager. And I ask, is it equal to the manager, which is Amanda? I close the bracket for the second condition. I close the bracket for the filter function. When I hit Enter, I get a list of clients who place the orders in the East region where the manager is Amanda. But there are duplicate values here. I want to remove them. Then I edit my function F2. And I wrap my function in a unique function. I hit the tab key. I close the bracket at the end. When I hit Enter, I get a unique list without any duplicates. Now I want to put them in one single cell separated by comma. And that's the perfect job of the array to text function. I hit F2 to put my function in the edit mode, and I type array to text, and then I close the bracket at the end. When I hit enter, I get exactly what I want. I can copy my function all the way down, and then I can expand this column, and I created my report by using pivot tables and dynamic array functions. Now let's create the same exact report by using Power Query. I select any cell in my source table on the data tab of the ribbon. I click on from table range. The query editor will open on top of Excel. In the query editor, I want to group by region and manager. Then I select region. I press control and select manager and I click on group by. Group by is available on the home tab. It's also available on the transform tab and in the right click menu. So when I click on group by, because I'm selecting more than one single column, the advanced option will be selected. This is the group by dialog box. Advanced is selected, as I said. I want to calculate the total sale. Then I create a new column and I name it total sales. And that will be a sum function. The operation will be sum. And the column that I want to sum will be the sales. So I'm grouping by region and manager. 
and I'm creating a total sales. I hit OK, and now I get the total sales for each manager in each region. That's wonderful. Let's expand the formula bar and have a closer look at the M code. I click on the down arrow to expand the formula bar, and then I zoom in a little bit, and here is my M function. To improve the legibility, I'm going to move it to multiple line and then explore it. So here is the function that we created, table.group. It refers to the previous step, which is change type, and I'm grouping based upon the region and the manager columns. And then here is the group that I created. It's a list because I see curly brackets, and then I have another curly bracket that means it's a list within a list. So if I look at the second curly bracket, the new column is called total sales. And it uses its own function, list.sum, I'm summing the sales, and here is the column that we created. What if I click at the end, I type a comma, and I add one more line, shift enter, to move to the next line. And in curly bracket, I'm going to create another grouping level. So I type a curly bracket, and I type in double quotation, clients. I click after the closing quotation. The new column will be named clients. I type a comma. What if I type each and then an underscore? An underscore will return a table. So if I click on the check mark, then this is what I'm getting. I'm getting a table. What does it mean, this table? What does this table store? For each one of the combination of the manager and region, Mary and South, if I click in the blank to the right side of table, I get a preview of all the records where the manager is Mary and the region is South, and I see the customer and I see the sales. Actually, I'm only interested in the customers. So what if I click after the underscore and I want just the customer column, so I type in square bracket customer. So when I hit enter, instead of getting a table, I will get a list of all the customers. When I click on the check mark, I get a list. If I click in the blank, then I get a list of all the customers where the manager is Mary and the region is South. That's wonderful. It looks like we have some duplicates. I want to get rid of the duplicates. And I'm going to use a Power Query function that works like the unique dynamic array function, and it's called list.distinct. So if I type list.distinct, I open bracket, and then I close the bracket after the customer column, and then I close the bracket for the list.distinct. When I click on the check mark, then I'm getting a list. If I explore this list, now I don't have any duplicates. Instead of having them in one single column, I want to put them in one single cell separated by commas. Then I'm going to wrap the list.distinct function in a text.combine function. I type text.combine, I open bracket, I click after the closing bracket of the list of this thing, I type a comma, and I want to separate the different values by a comma. Then in double quotation, I type comma space, and I close the bracket for the text.combine. When I click on the check mark, then I get exactly what I'm looking for. In preparation for sending my data back into Excel, I'm going to sort the region column. Then on the Home tab, I sort the sending. I'm going to sort the manager column as well. I want to change the data type for total sales. I click on the data type icon and I change it to currency. I also want to change the data type for clients and I change it to tax. Now I'm ready to send my data back into Excel. On the Home tab, I click on the down arrow for Close and Load. I click on Close and Load 2. I want to load it in the existing worksheet. I select the existing, and I select my destination cell L1, and I hit OK. I can close the Queries and Connection pane, and here is my report created by using Power Query. It's the same exact report like the one I built with Pivot Tables and Dynamic Array function. Let me know in a comment which method you prefer, the combination of pivot tables with dynamic array functions or by using Power Query with a little modification to the M code. If you found value in this tutorial, give it a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe to my channel to be notified when new tutorials are released. The best is yet to come. Thanks for watching and see you next time.